2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. Reading from the New Living Translation, it says, We are humans, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons. So if you ain't in his word, you'll know, you don't know which weapons to use. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons. We don't need guns and knives. You don't need a whole lot of attitude. You ain't got to cuss nobody out. You ain't got to try to run nobody off the road. You ain't got to give nobody no finger. See, that's worldly weapons. You ain't got to try to, you ain't got to render evil for evil. Yeah. Somebody wrong you, you plotting your mind and scheming, and you can't sleep at night because you got to get her back. I know she didn't say that to me. I know he didn't do that to me. Just flesh. Christians. We do not use worldly weapons to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. That's some heavy statements right there Paul is making to the church. We destroy, he's saying the church, we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture, that means take into prison, the rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Father, thank you for the few minutes that we have. Bless your people, and if it's one that don't know you, or two or three, bring them on in tonight. Yeah. As my daughter has already decreed and declared, Father God, walk up and down these aisles, Father God, inspect us. Renovate our minds and renovate our hearts. Prepare your word to penetrate and impregnate us, Father God. Don't let us be leaking Christians, Lord. Help us to be able to handle the Shekinah glory that is upon our lives, Father God. Help us to be able to handle the revelation that's down in our spirit. Father God, in Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As I stated earlier, my God, we was, uh, have been talking about the... The soul ties, the godly soul ties, and the ungodly soul ties, and God's been moving, so I begin to seek God for a word, and got one today, and stayed in all morning, uh, uh, typing and getting things together, and and just reading, read. It's always good to read. Read to all my ministers that's graduated ministers in training. My God, when you're getting ready to, uh, uh, you're seeking God for a pulse concerning something in the church or something out of the church, in marriage, church, whatever, just read, just read, just read. Just read. Read books. That's the, you know what I'm saying? Read, read, read your word of God, my God. And God will begin to download and drop inside of you. And so God began to drop this word inside of me. And I think it's uh, 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 timely for going off for Christ Church, especially coming out of missing ingredients. As I sit off in the class, oh, my God, Minister Lenny is dropping some fire, my God, inside of missing ingredients. My God, dealing with the mind. I need y'all to understand how important the mind. The mind is every single thing. The Bible says it's with the mind. That means your thoughts, your belief system. It's with the mind that you and I serve God. So if your mind is all over the place, if your mind is not anchored, if your mind, my God, you know how you get laser focus? Your mind. You got to have laser focus in your mind. That means your thoughts got to be laser focused. And the only way you're going to be able to do that, you got to begin to, to down, allow God's word to be downloaded. You got to take on God's mind. You got to take on God's thoughts. The Bible says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. So when we quote that, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, what mind did Christ Jesus have? Genesis through Revelation. That's the mind that he had. And that's what it's going to take in this hour. So I'm going to give you this, and then we're going to talk a little bit. Hallelujah. The flesh, church, is as much our enemy as the demons. Y'all know I'm going to take my time for a reason. That flesh, this thing right here, this thing that we was, this body that we was born in does not want to submit to the laws of God. It does not want to surrender to the decrees and statutes and commandments of our Lord and Savior. The flesh goes against everything that you read, everything that's in the Bible, the flesh goes against it. Everything that you're reading concerning spirituality, oh my God, goes against the flesh. The flesh don't want to submit. The flesh is always in rebellion to the things of God. That's why the scripture said, whichever one you feed, my God, that's the one that you're going to navigate to pretty much. Whichever one that you feed will be strong. If you feed your flesh, it will be strong. And if you feed your spirit, your spirit will be strong. And when you feed your spirit, my God, your flesh will die. So therefore, when temptation come, you will always submit to your spirit. So when he come knocking on the door at 1.15 in the morning trying to get in, you're going to be like, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah. 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 That's it. Yeah. 
Flesh. Flesh is killing the people of God everywhere. And y'all must realize, and I, might, I have to remind y'all, y'all know that pastor just don't talk to people in Tulsa. The same flesh is in Sacramento, California. The same flesh is in Fresno, California. The same flesh I'm talking about is in North Tulsa. Just because it's big don't mean it's God. Just because a lot of people don't mean that it's more God. People run where they can hide. I don't want my flesh picked on no more. This is painful. Don't ask me to stop doing that. I don't want to stop. My flesh like this. My flesh used to like the gang bang. My flesh used to like to sell dope and smoke dope. There was an excitement into that. Even though I was killing myself, it was still fun. That's what my flesh thought. See what I just said? Even though I was killing myself, it was still fun because my flesh liked it. Ooh, some of you are killing yourself and didn't even catch what I said. You heard this right here and go out there and do something and lay up with something and smoke something and it's killing you. It don't even care. Flesh too strong. But a Bible's in your hand. You got a weapon in your hand. Use it. How do you use it? That means obey it and read it. Yeah. I'm trying to help you because you know I love you. Give God a hand before I move forward. <laughs> Amen. Jesus, I need you to understand this church and I'm going to get going. Jesus came to free us from all of our enemies. How many of y'all believe that Jesus died so you can be free? Let me see your hands. Now, y'all know when Pastor do stuff, he set you up real good. Now, everybody in this church, Kendall B. Jackson, raised their hand and said that they believe that God died to free us. Then we have to ask ourselves is, why am I not free? Some things God do, let me balance that. So nobody get discouraged. Some things God do immediately, deliverance, healing, and other things he has to walk you through. Because as he take his time and walk you through stuff, he's getting you prepared. And while you're going through stuff, he got other people you know, watching you. And so it's going to come a time when the time is right and you have overcame that thing, uh, that situation, that he's going to say that person has been watching you for you to decide to hard him and tell them. Some things God do instantaneously and immediately, and other things he allow you to walk through. Yeah. So that's why you can't, that's why the Bible says don't faint. Yeah. Don't get so discouraged when yeah. you tap out and quit. Yeah. My God, all things, quit quoting it and believe it. All things are working together for the good. Yeah. If you're in God's will, no matter what you're going through, it's working towards and for your good. Yeah. That's why you can't faint. Ah, come on, somebody. Sometimes God would extend things yeah. because he got people, my God, that need to watch you go through. And when they watch you go through, they need to watch you conquer and overcome what you went through. See, everything you're going through ain't really about you. It's about people that's watching you. That's why you got to be careful of being such Facebook queens and preachers and pastors. And then when you're going through, all of a sudden your Facebook quotes shift. Now it ain't giving God the glory. Now it ain't scripture this. And I love going off of Christ. And I love this and that. And now it's something else. You're mocking your own life. Because you got people saying, I knew it was just a matter of time before she started posting something different. It's just the way the world is. It's cruel. I go back to what I said. It's going to require laser focus. Yet many believers are bound. Even though we have confessed that we know that Christ died to set us free, we are bound by strongholds, yokes, and bondages in our spirits, and also in our flesh. The flesh is mind. Write this down, mind, will, and emotions. We know that. We hear that. But just mind, will, and emotions, and write down your body. Put your body in there. We going somewhere tonight. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. These things dominate flesh, will, emotions, and body. That's why you got to bring your flesh under subjection to the spirit. Under subjection, submission to your spirit. If your flesh, my God, is in control, it'll never submit to God's voice. It'll never surrender to God's ways. You got to bring your flesh. Y'all look at me. Everybody look at me. Flesh, spirit. Flesh is left. Spirit is right. God always operates from the right hand. You got to bring flesh up under submission to the spirit. When the spirit is on top, my God, the spirit leads you. When the flesh is on top, the flesh leads you. See what I'm trying to say? Who's leading you tonight? 
Thank God that your mind led you to church. But when you leave church, where your mind going to lead you to? See what I'm trying to say? But y'all see how I was wiggling? See how I was wiggling? What wiggles like that? Say that again. Python and what else? Come on, say it, y'all. Snakes. He's trying to get in. He's trying to wiggle. He's looking for an opportunity to devour. He's looking for an opportunity to, my God, to pounce on that, which is flesh. Oh, because he can't rule on the spirit. He can't rule a person that's full of the spirit. He can't. Oh, this is good. God, get me up out the introduction. Oh, my God, be so full, Pastor Teresa. Mm. We got to make sure that our body, mind, will, and emotion is not dominating us. And sometimes we allow, and it can happen to the best of us. It can happen to the best of us while our flesh begins to reverse and get on top of our spirit. And then when that happens, my God, these things, the mind, will, and emotions, and body begin to control us like a puppet on a string. And they become evident in our lifestyle. All you got to do is watch. That's why it's not a sprint. Pass it's a marathon. Just watch. Just watch. If they come sit for three years, that don't mean nothing. But can you stay the course? Can you endure to the end? Can you build for 120 years when they laughing at you? Come on. Do anybody got foolish faith off in her? Come on, somebody. <laughs> mm. And so different things, my God, shows up in our lifestyle when it's of the flesh, and it shows up in our lifestyle when it's of the spirit. This evening, I was be speaking on the subject of recognizing strongholds in your life. Recognizing, write that down, strongholds in your life. And there's two different types of strongholds. Old Testament strongholds, they use them as a safe haven, a place of refuge, a place to, to hide out. David ran to a cave that's called stronghold. My God, he had an encounter with God in a cave. Come on, somebody. And God sent 300 men to him, and they came out. He sent some men that was in debt and destitute and discouraged. They came out warriors, my God, when they went off into that stronghold, that cave. My God. But we're going to talk about recognizing strongholds. Mm. My God, mm, 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 mm. the word stronghold can mean a well-fortified city or fortress. I'm going to what? It can also mean a central place of agreed upon thoughts and views. Strongholds conjure up images, images. Oh, my God, images. Come on, somebody, you already got an image of what you're going to eat tonight when you leave church. Come on, somebody. Strongholds conjure up images of something rigid and unmoving. Rigid and unmoving, rigid and unmoving. Watch this. My God, when Jesus crossed over and, 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 uh, and dealt with the, the man that was possessed with demons, demonic man, the demonic man, he was possessed, my God, uh, full of demons. And when uh, Jesus crossed over and came in the presence, oh, my God, the, the demons tremble in the presence of the anointing. Just when Jesus showed up on the scene, my God, them demons on the inside of them started shaking and trembling. And so, my God, they said, my God, Jesus commanded the demons to come up out of the demon act, the demon act man, the man that was possessed with many different legions of demons. My God, and the demons spoke to God and said, who, my God, I said, spoke to God and said, suffer us not to leave the region. Suffers us not to leave the territory. What is he saying? There are certain demons, my God, that is assigned, oh my God, to, to, to control and dominate territories. Just like San Francisco, my God, got to earn uh, that spirit up there in San Francisco. Come on, somebody. And, and Atlanta got that, uh, that spirit, my God. Come on. Because certain demons don't want to leave territories. Oh my God, you got demons out east, demons out north, demons out west, my God. We're dealing with a spiritual warfare, my God. That's why you can't legislate, legislate a demon out. My God, you can't vote nobody in, my God, and think they're going to drive out some demons. You got to have some power. You got to have some anointing. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you, my God? There are certain demons that's assigned to certain places, my God, to govern, to dominate and control, my God. We're dealing with religious demons out north. We're dealing with spiritual demons out north as well, my God. The demon of death, the demon of gangs, the demon of drugs. And I was telling somebody at the, oh, my God, at the K-Time event, my God, with Pastor Jeff, them this Saturday, I mean, uh, last, yeah, last Saturday, 
uh, a Caucasian brother came up to me. He said, what can we do with going on out north? He said, I grew up out north. I grew up out north. He said, I went to John Burroughs. This was a Caucasian, my God. He said, what can we do? I said, first, we have to pray. Come on. And then we got to get in agreement. Well, people are praying, my God. But, oh, my God, but are you in agreement? It's one thing to pray, but the people got to come together and be in agreement. And it's one thing to come and pray and be in agreement, but the people got to be in agreement. And then they got to also, my God, believe that what they're praying for. Many people are sure up to pray, but they don't believe. Some people don't want it to change because they get money off of them demons out north. Come on. Some people don't want north side to change. They want it to stay sick like that because you got a lot of people benefiting from all the hell that's going on in North Tulsa. Oh, they can say what they want to say. I'm going to keep it on a dollar. So that you have different type of demonic spirits, my God, trying to possess and control. It's going to take more than speaking in tongues to drive out some demonic activity in your life. Oh, some of the things, my God, I don't want to get ahead, but I'm going to say it. Some of the things that you personally are dealing with, it's demonic oppression. That's why I say some of us oppressed, depressed, and suppressed. And it's, you wonder where's this coming from? Why am I thinking like this? Why am I so tired? Why come I can't read? Why come I lost my desire to want to pray, my God? Demonic activity. Demonic activity will hinder you. Demonic activity will sap your energy. That's why when you get ready to move, be careful when you move. And if you move into a house and apartment, you better make sure you pray. You don't know what was going on in that apartment. You don't know what type of witchcraft and what type of sin and stuff was going on in them houses and apartments you moving into. You just bouncing from house to house, ain't got nobody. No, you better be careful. You don't know what you're walking into. Oh, Pastor Dean talked about how he on last Wednesday, I believe, or Sunday, whatever it was, some of us got to clean our house up. Some of the stuff that the objects, thank you, Holy Ghost, I'm heavy right now. Some of the objects and different stuff that we got in our house, my God, is attracting them unclean demonic spirits. Oh, my God, y'all need to talk to me, my God. Some of that stuff, you adopted the world's way, you brought the world into your house, and the world that came in with demonic activity, and you wonder why your house there went chaos. You wonder why the kids, my God, can't sleep at night, and they flunking out of school and stuff. You better go do a clean sweep of your crib. Yeah. We talking about a cold-blooded battle. Demonic activity. I'm sorry we ain't jumping the shout, but this is Bible. And so here's another thing we got to be careful for, the images. See, the enemy, enemy starts very long, young. Oh, my God. Sister Ruby, that baby that's, that you holding, that little baby, the enemy is after him, him, right? Now, he's formulating images and thoughts in that baby now. And so, therefore, as parents and grandparents, my God, we have to be very careful what we exposing our children to, my God, because the Bible says, my God, in the Old Testament, oh, my God, oh, my God, Moses, uh, the enemy wanted to kill all the infant babies, my God. The enemy tried to kill Moses, my God, come on, at a young age, and his mother took him and hid him, oh, my God, in the Nile. Come on, somebody, oh, my God. And then you bring it up to the New Testament. Herod was so upset, my God, with Jesus that he said, my God, was so upset with the people because they deceived them, he said, find every male child that's two years old and younger and kill them. That's been a decree, my God, way back over 2,000 years ago. The King Herod made a decree. Y'all listen to me, mamas and daddies. The enemy, the Herod, the enemy was an enemy, my God. He made a decree to kill every male child that's two years old and under because he was trying to find Jesus. Well, guess what? That same decree, that same clarion call is still going out. My God, it's re- oh my God, from generation to generation to generation, the enemy is out to kill. Look at all the people that's dying. Oh my God, look at the things that's happening. My God, I'm so grieved when I watch the news and see all these parents, my God, molesting, my God, molesting my mind. Oh my God, raping, my God, and abusing these babies, my God. And I said, I wish mm, touch my grandchildren is on and pop it. I swear where I'm going back to the third, baby. You better ask somebody. Look at all these parents. Protect your children. Cover your children. Quit letting your children. Don't leave the house. Make a, make a decree to yourself that I will not. I, my God, allow my, chi- my child, my God, to get, go, go to school without some type of prayer. Laying your hands on your baby. Covering your children, my God. I tell my daughter, we got to pray for AJ, my God. I pray for my grandchildren. Quit letting your kids go to these prisons because that's all school is, is prisons. 
Why do I say that? Because when you go to school, they got you got to unlock. I mean, you open up your backpack. They wand you. You got to go through all these metal detectors and all of those type of stuff. They are conditioning. I'm still with the images. They are conditioning the minds of our children. That's what they do in prison, baby. They wand you. They pat you down and all those stuff. They condition. That's everywhere. In union, jigs, everywhere. Go through the wand. Open up your backpack. My God. They walk. My, come on. That's prison mentality. Many of y'all don't know, but Minister Janice and some of y'all do know, my God, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the prisons is one of the number one funders of the state of Oklahoma. Yeah. They have to keep a certain amount of people in prison because that's how they fund the state. My God, they don't cut nothing about you. That's why I take laser focus, my God. Oh, my God. They'll tell you not to whoop your kid, but they'll give them 50 years when you don't. Yeah. Yeah. They don't want you to diss your kids. You know why? Because they want to send them to prison so they can diss them, but they can get paid off of them. Demonic activity. Bitch is still preaching. Mm. So we got to begin to watch the images. We got to watch the images. So we have to repent and ask God to forgive us for the things we have allowed, especially the children that's hot older. We got to we ask God to forgive us for the things we have displayed. I didn't have to do it with Juju and Naila. My God, you got to ask God to forgive you parents and grandparents for the things that you have exposed your kids to. You have let your kids see stuff that they weren't supposed to see. Some of us has given our children responsibility they weren't ready for. We have to ask God to forgive us for that. Some of us have never allowed our children to be children. Because we want to kick it and do all our things, so we make them do everything. That's not Bible. The Bible says that we will stand, stand before God and give an account for the way we raised our children. My God, some of y'all that got children up there in game time and you wonder what's cracking, look at your life. Because a lot of what they're doing, you taught them. And I taught them. It is what it is. But you have an opportunity to reverse the curse, though. Start today. Come on, give God a hand. So if you're struggling with bad images or different stuff that's happened to you in your past, like we all do, my God, have happened, things that happened. Y'all know that stuff. I don't have to go in it. You're going to have to ask God like we teach you over here, my God, to go up into the attic, attic, attic. Think about an attic in the house. You put stuff up in the attic that you don't want to use no more, or you really don't want nobody to see. Yeah. But you got to allow God to go up into the attic of your mind and renovate your mind. Oh, you got to gut you. He got to gut you. He got to gut you. He got to gut you. And you know how you do that, my God? You do it spiritually? You got to read your word. Be yeah. transformed. Be renovated by the renewing of your mind. Oh, my God, you got to allow God to wash your mind. Don't you know, my God, if you read that word every single day, oh, my God, and you continue to have day-to-day -day contact with God's word, there'll be a whole lot of images that you will forget over a period of time. You just keep reading your word. You just keep serving God, and you'll look back and be like, man, I forget. Somebody will bring up something like, girl, I don't even remember that. What you talking about? My God. And he'll start, he, you know, somebody old man, he go, boy, I don't even know what you're talking about. When? You sure that? You might have talking about something else because you can't remember, my God, because God has renovated your mind. Uh, many of you can't get past your soul ties because the image of the soul tie keep pulling you back. I said many of you can't get past your soul ties because the image that you have of what you did with him or her pulls you back. You got to allow God to wash your mind, baby. Don't you know images can become strongholds? Stronghold imprison you. I got with me so far. And so therefore also strongholds can become unmovable. They won't move. A whole lot of speaking in tongues won't move it. You got to wage war with your own self. Oh, T.D. Jake said, the enemy and me, you got to raise war with your own self. You know, you got to raise war with your flesh. Oh, my God, you got to raise war. You got to tell your flesh, no, I will not submit. No, I will not go. No, I ain't drinking. No, I ain't smoking. I am going to read my Bible. Paul said, I train my flesh, my body, to do what it should, not what it want to. You got to talk to yourself, baby. And quit letting your flesh talk to you. You need to talk to your flesh and say, bow down and submit. My God, and if your flesh is too strong, get on the altar and fast. Come on, somebody. Push back a plate, my God. Oh, my God, you got to make Make your flesh submit. Your flesh ain't going to submit. I told y'all before when I preached months ago, my God, your flesh is just dominating you. Your flesh is just beating your mind up, beating your flesh up, beating your wheel up. You got to beat your flesh. You got to beat it. You got to beat it. You got to train your flesh to submit. And so when your flesh is high, start, uh, high and strong, start walking around your house just doing this in the spirit. Say, I'm beating my flesh, I'm beating my flesh, I'm beating my flesh. On lunchtime, you ain't going to eat, walk around and just do this outside. Put your hoodie on, put your coat on, put your gloves on and do that. And your people in your job going to take you crazy. I'm talking about foolish faith. Do I got any foolish faith over here? How bad do you? Sometimes you got to look like a field fool to execute God's will. I said, you got to look like, oh, my God, Dean, I need some volume. Sometimes you got to look like a fool 
to do God's will. How bad do you want to be free, baby? Yeah. 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 So a lot of us try to be too cute and too cool. I don't, I'm not interested in momentarily victory. The Bible tells us in Genesis 1, 26, God gave us dominion, mama. Dominion means rulership. You're supposed to rule it. It is not supposed to rule you. And when your flesh is ruling you, my God, you're out of order. When you can't tell your flesh to sit down and shut up and be quiet, oh, my God, you're out of order. Because God said in Genesis 1, 26, write it down. God gave you dominion over everything but people. You own the earth. You own everything. You got dominion over this stuff. That's Bible. Come on, let's go a little deeper. And so how are you going to move some of these, these strongholds that's in your life? You got to make some decisions. You got to make some decisions. The Bible says whichever one you yield to, that is your master. You yield to the spirit, the spirit is your master. You yield to the flesh, and the flesh becomes a master. On a psychological level, strongholds are a vital part of our belief system. Look at the video. I mean, look at the screen. Look at all that stuff going on in our mind. Mm. Psychological, psychological level. Strongholds are a vital part of our belief system. They are the driving force behind our thought patterns. Driving force behind our thought pro- uh, patterns. How's your mind? Really, really, how's your mind? Oh, my God, thank you, Law. I see y'all. I'm going to say this. Whoever get the mind, get the life. I'm going to leave that right there. Whoever gets the mind, get the life. Driving force. Strongholds. They show up, my God, in our thought patterns and our attitudes. You wonder why a person just attitude just always nasty. And I'm being serious. Attitudes determine altitude. Many of us want to aspire. Many of us want to go up into the things of God. We want to do great things. Many of us want to be promoted on our job. But your supervisors and those that's higher up, they have seen you get down when stuff don't go your way. They have seen your words. They have seen your attitude. They have seen how you have done and said things, my God. And they're saying, if I gave her that level of responsibility, because anytime promotion comes, there's more responsibility. And so they're looking how they people that's over you are looking at how you handle stuff on this level before they try to bring you to this level. So a lot of us is upset at supervisors and so forth. But my God, it's our attitude. When stuff don't go our way, we show too much African American attitude. She was trying to say, we show really, let me, now let me do the spiritual side, we show too much flesh. Yeah. Yeah. And they said, I can't take the chance, even though Sharon is qualified, even though Tanya is qualified, oh. even though Pastor Teresa is qualified, but her attitude Come is on. disqualifying her. Mm-hmm. Even though we need her, we need her expertise. My God, I need Pastor Teresa, but her attitude, I can't take the chance of her contaminating the whole organization, so I keep her down here when she's supposed to be up here. And yeah. that's why you're frustrated, because you really not grow that down here, but God can't take you there, my God, because your attitude is disqualifying you. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that was heavy right there. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. You also see these attitudes in your relationships. Can't nobody talk to you about nothing. You're a time bomb. Soon as somebody disagrees with you, you gone. When I mean by gone, I'm talking about you just gone. Your mouth is all over the place, and, and then you get so angry, you don't even want to repent about what you just said. So we wonder why every time somebody says something that we disagree with, why is it that we begin to, as we say, pop off or why we get to do all this? That's a stronghold, man. I'm being serious. It's a stronghold. You wonder why you can't channel, you can't control, my God, the anger and the rage. It's in your mind. As a man thinketh, so he becomes. You and I are some total of our own thoughts. Are you listening to me? Every time something don't go your way, my God, instead of you thinking godly thoughts, you cussing somebody out. My God, you're in relationships, you got, and you thank you, Holy Ghost, and your kids are seeing you right now. They seeing you, my God. Oh, my God, I'm hearing it, and I'm seeing it, my God. But many of you, my God, my God, you're wondering why the kids are seeing stuff. The kids are seeing stuff. 
It's been said, my God, it's hard for me to understand God because I'm looking at my parents one way in church and another way at home. That's being told right there upstairs right now. I'm confused, pastor. I see my mom and daddy doing this, but I don't, they this they like this at church, but they some way, I see my mama. I'm just being honest with you, man. We dealing with this stuff, so, that, so therefore, you know what I'm saying? Mm, I got your attitude. Christians, trying to help you. Attitudes. One way in here and another way at the crib. So when they get your food order wrong, when you go through the drive-thru because you're too lazy to cook and you cuss somebody out, your son and your daughter just seen that. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. But now you're all up in my face talking about pastor. Hey, I love God and all that. But you just cuss somebody out on the way to church. You are shooting yourself in the foot. Attitude. This is real gospel preaching over here, baby. Attitude, then our actions, then it moves to our actions. It starts out as a driving force, then it moves to attitudes and actions. My God, we wonder why we can't live what we profess to believe. Mm. You live from the inside out, not from the outside in. When Old Testament, they live from the outside. It was all about rituals and ceremonies and sacrifices, external. When Christ came, he said, now nah, the kingdom of heaven is within. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? It's within. Well, you and I have to go within. Yeah. Many of us base who we are external. Who you are external, my God. We pull from the world. We get our identity from the world. My God, the longer the weave, the longer I weave. The longer the nails, the longer I Come on, somebody. You get your whole identity based on the world. My God, when you going to begin to allow God to shape who you are? When you going to begin to believe who God said you are? Oh, my God, I'm serious, church. Come on, somebody. And and so we have images, 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 my God, of ourselves. And we try to base who we are off of somebody we see. We're looking at the housewives of Atlanta. They got all this stuff. And you're trying to do all this stuff they're trying to do. You want to look like, uh, ooh, she pretty. Ooh, are her pretty. Ooh, her color pretty. My God. See, uh, all that's external, all that's flesh. And, and, so, and so find out what's going on with them internal. You know what I'm trying to say? All, all that old cussing and all that stuff. You know it ain't no God no more off in there. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? Ain't no mean, ain't, you ain't going to tell me you love God and you, every word come out your mouth. My God's a cuss word. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'm struggling. Well, get fixed. You just said whom the son set free is free indeed. You just said God can deliver you. My God, every time you get mad, you ain't got to cuss nobody out. That's attitude that leads to actions. We're dealing with recognizing strongholds. That's why the spirit is flowing like this, because we got to recognize this type of stuff. Yeah, we got to yeah. recognize that our wrong thinking, my God, is affecting our attitude. And our attitude is affecting yeah, our actions, my God. And our actions are affecting people that's watching us. Come on, somebody. And so we shoot ourselves in the foot, my God. We go off at any given time. We're working in the ministry, my God, but we ain't got no patience with our children at home. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. We serve everybody in the ministry, but then we cuss our children out. We ain't got no time for our children. We make time for everybody in church, but we won't make time for our own kids. Come on now. They see that stuff. That's why they're struggling up there. Strongholds, attitudes, actions. How you going to take care of everything up off of her and then disrespect everything at the house? That's called a public success and a private failure. We're talking about thought patterns that leads to attitudes, that leads to actions. If you got children, you need to repent. Every one of us in here has to repent to our children. I don't care if they're 45 and 50. Come on now. Come on now. Go, call, go get that thing that you said. Go, that word you spoke by God when he was in the third grade or she was in the fifth grade, go get it and bring it back in. Say, I pronounced that and bring that back in. I'm calling that back in. I'm calling that back in. The devil is alive. Lord, forgive me for saying that about my daughter. My daughter is somebody. She ain't sorry. My God, my daughter's a queen. My son is a king, my God. The devil is alive. I'm finna quit speaking this negative stuff in my children's life. My children are kings and queens. You hurt your children. You're hurting your children. Your kids is fearfully and wonderfully made because the Bible says they are. And you don't tell them that because you don't know what the books say. And so you're pronouncing all that pain, my God, from your childhood on your children. Somebody give God a hand. And so I want everybody to understand, pastor's not fussing. He's just keeping it on the dollar. I ain't fussing. I love my church. And y'all know what I'm talking. I'm talking to the world. 
my God. No matter what we say, church, in everyday life, or what we truly believe about the world around us, the strongholds in our mind come to surface. When we, when, oh my God, they come to surface when we are put into pressure situations. If you really want to know, be careful what you, remember I tell y'all, be careful what you ask God for. You want to come up to the next level? There's a whole lot of pressure. A whole lot of things God got to do to get you to this level. I'm just standing up here because it's, it's on the top. But it's, on, it's, on, I mean, it's okay down here. But to go up here, it's, it requires more dying. More dying. More dying. More dying. And you know what? And when I'm talking about dying, thank you, Holy Ghost. See, many of us, we'll come down here and do this. We'll bow our knee. But we really don't bow our hearts. And see, some of us, we think it's unpopular because we come out of a lot of churches where they didn't allow you to prostrate yourself. Because when you begin to prostrate yourself, and there's different ways to pray. You don't have to always prostrate. You can kneel. But there's something about when you prostrate. For me, it means total surrender. And when I lay down and prostrate, that means I'm blocking out everything around me. See, some of you, my God, you'll come do this. But you're looking over to see what she's doing. Who the... Distracted. So you're really not even in prayer. You're here, but you're not here. What you're coming down there for if you ain't coming to seek God? The altar, let me teach you right. The altar represents sacrifice. Whenever you get out your seat and come lay down and come here, you got to come with the mind saying, whatever you're coming for, I'm finna kill it. So then you got to pray and say, God, give me something to kill this with. Give me a weapon to kill this with. Lord, my God, give me a weapon. Show me something. Give me a scripture. I've been struggling with this nasty attitude. I've been struggling with this flesh. I've been struggling with this sexual demon. This whatever demon you got. Give me some word to kill it with. Ooh, my God, the word is sharp. It's sharp. It's powerful. The word will break every chain. It will destroy every yoke. The word. You know how you get the anointing? Reading the word and dying. You got to be crushed. Jesus was crushed in, the, in Gethsemane. He was crushed. He was crucifying his flesh, getting his flesh ready to get on the cross. His flesh didn't want to. You remember what he said? Lord, my God, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. That was his flesh. But then he rose in his spirit, woman of God. He said, but nevertheless, his flesh wanted to win, but his spirit said, nevertheless. Oh, my God, if I don't die, my God, Yolanda, the Jude, you're going to stay strung out. My God, I got to go, my God. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Everything connected to me wins. Mm, mm, mm. Come on, it always manifests. No matter what you believe, you can believe truth. But negative attitudes and behavior will manifest if it's a stronghold in your mind. Don't you know it's so important? I love your post, uh, uh, um, Ariel. I know I love your post. You know what I'm trying to say? Because I'm watching you. I'm watching you raging war. Woman of God, keep going hard like that. Your stuff ain't any other than that good food you be putting on her, but your, oh my God, I said, boy, she be putting it down. Ooh, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there, but I keep raging war because somebody need that. Keep standing, woman of God. My God, ooh, my God, I promise you, my God, my God, my God, this is a cold-blooded battle. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go a little deeper. So when you squeeze, what comes out? When the pressure is applied to your life, because you ask God to mold you and shape you, you ask God to develop you. When stuff don't go your way, what comes out? When the pastor don't answer you right then, what type of attitude do you get towards him? When I don't do what you think I should be doing, when you think I should be doing, then let's see what your allegiance is then. Because sometimes, I'm going to be honest, because I know how to train my disciples. Sometimes I deliberately don't do stuff just to see how you're going to act. Because I'm still raging war. I'm still learning what I got around me. I ain't, it, it don't never stop with me. I thank God for my former life because it taught me how to peep game from all angles, baby. And so our delivery won't respond just to see how you act. You train people how to treat you. So you complain about how you're being, tra- how you're being treated. You, teach, you let them treat you like that. You let them treat you like that. Oh, 
my God. Mm. No matter what we say in everyday life, let me move, and what we truly believe about us and around us, the stronghold in our mind come to surface when, we, when it's pressure put on us, my God, in situation. These can also be emotionally safe havens as well to protect us from perceived harm. Be careful that when you build a wall, that the same wall you're building to keep the enemy out that you ain't keeping yourself in. Be careful that when you build a wall because you're trying to keep people away. You're trying to keep the enemy out. And see, a lot of you see people that God has raised up to bless you, to be in your life. You see every human being as an enemy. That's what the enemy wants you to do. Look at another human being as the enemy. That's why you got to understand that, my God, who, my God, we all a mess on our way to progress. And that your battle, according to the word of God, is not with flesh and blood. It's with principalities. Yeah. My God, that's why I be telling y'all, you got to walk into the house of the Lord already willing to give people some passes because you don't know what a person went through. You don't know what bad news somebody didn't got. You don't know what, my God, a, 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 a sickness somebody been diagnosed with. You don't know what somebody didn't went through when they walk up off in her and you're used to that person being bubbly and all of a sudden she quiet and you speak to her, hey, Tanya, and Tanya don't say nothing to you. You don't know what's in Tanya's mind. Quit being so sticky. That's flesh. Yeah. You don't know. I'm reminded of the great Noel, Bishop Noel Jones. Bishop Noel Jones said, you don't know what it took for somebody to make it to the house of the Lord on a Sunday. Some people had to crawl out of bed just to get to church. Some people been laying in their bed for four, five months, my God, in weeks, and they decided I'm going to try to make my way to church, my God. Learn how to give people a pass. Oh, I can't wait to Sunday. I'm coming down, go Goliath, baby. I can't wait to Sunday, baby. Oh, my God, you don't know what it took. Learn how to walk in the spirit so you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. You don't know what people are going through. Yeah. Everybody running around here. I'm just talking about the general running around, but give somebody a pass. Yeah. Show some love. Second greatest commandment is to love thy neighbor as thyself. Yeah. Learn how to see people the way Christ see them. Yeah. The Bible says never judge a thing before it's time. Yeah. A lot of us just judge the people. Oh, she don't look right. She don't talk right. Uh, she messy. It is okay. She may be messy. That's why she's in the church, to get healthy. Yeah. Do you got enough power to help her to get healthy, or do you got enough flesh to talk about her? You're talking about it, but can you help her get free? Yeah. Oh, I'm great. I'm a man of the great, my God, Tamara Bennett. Tamara Bennett said, if you got the power, Tamara Bennett out of tip, uh, tip ministry in Sacramento, she said, if you got the power to turn me down, you better have the power to build me back up. Yeah. Oh, we good at turning somebody down. Attitude, yeah. but we ain't got no anointing to build nobody back up. We attitude turn you down, but you ain't got no anointing to build them back up. And we wonder why people don't want to come to the body of Christ all over the nation. Too much flesh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still with strongholds. Write this down, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 5. Lord, I mercy. We are humans, but we don't wage war as humans do, as I said. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of the human reason and, and, and destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle, as I stated, my God, that keeps people from knowing God. We capture the rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. I reread that because you need to understand it's good to hear the word over and over and over and over and over. And I encourage you to really read that because many of us is wounded real bad right now. Things has happened. And I'm not, my God, downplaying stuff that has happened to you. But a lot of our pain, a lot of our frustration, and a lot of our defeat is in our thinking. Until you get your mind free, you will never be free. A lot of us, a lot of our hang-ups and our habits, a lot of that stuff is in our mind. You already passed that stuff. You just ain't made a decision to walk out of it. The Bible says, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. He said, choose life. Many of us not choosing life, we're choosing death. And you, have to, and you make excuses. Quit making excuses and get free. My God, in this saying, the scripture I just read to you, Paul is discussing mindsets or strongholds that keep us in bondage. Mindsets keeping us in bondage. I tell y'all, y'all hear me say this, but when I got free in my mind from reading God's word, the addictions, the mindset instantly, instantly fell off. Instantly. My God, I smoked cigarettes for two and a half years after I got saved and woke up one morning and had no desire to smoke cigarettes no more. Why? Because I kept engaging God's word. I kept reading God's word, my God. I I always say, God, deliver me. God, deliver me. God, tell me, quit begging me. Mm. And so therefore, I just kept reading God's word. 
I kept reading God's word. The Bible says in the book of John, my God, the word of God washes you, church. Right. Gospel of John, it washes you. When you read God's word every day, it washes your mind. Mm -hmm. It washes the, away those strongholds. It washes away those images. It washes away those negative attitudes, my God, that leads to negative actions, my God. And I just woke up and had no desire to smoke. And they smoked. That was way, that was August, uh, August, not April, August the 1st. 7.45 in the morning at a Wachita in Poto, Oklahoma. Come on, prison. Woke up and had no desire to smoke cigarettes no more. After, after get, getting saved and smoking for two and a half years. So it was a process. But I was reading the word. See, many of you are trying to quit, but God said, you're going to have to quit through me. That's why you can't quit, because you're trying to do it on your own. You got to do it through Christ. And when you do it through Christ, you maintain it through Christ. Yeah, yeah. So I went to five treatment centers trying to get free. Never worked. Relapsed soon as I got out of them. But when I accepted Christ, 20 plus years later, still free. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. What am I trying to say? The stronghold that was in my mind, I was trying to do it in the flesh. I just told y'all through the reading of the word, there are certain things you can't wage war after the flesh. I was trying to wage war against gang life and addiction through the flesh. That's why I kept getting defeated. But when I submitted to the spirit, it's been curtains ever since. Who am I talking to in the church? Some of you, you can't get free because you're trying to do it by the flesh. You got to do it in the spirit. You got to be versed and quit trying to use the flesh and the gimmicks in the world's way and just say yes to God. I'm here. I'm going on to see what the end of it say. Ain't no shadow of turning. You do it for me, God, and I'll give you the glory. God knew what he was doing. God knew that he said, I cannot let this man get delivered through no treatment center. He's going to be a raving fan for 12 steps. He said, I'm not going to share my glory. I'm not going to share that passion with no 12 steps. I got to get all the glory. I'm going to be the one. Here. God said, I got to be the one that delivered him. All that passion, 12 steps, the devil's a lie. God said, I'm a jealous God. I want all of the glory. Oh, my God. God ain't going to show his glory. Some of y'all sharing too much of God's glory with idols. Every time you and me share my testimony, I'm boasting this unto the Lord, baby. And I ain't going to never stop sharing it because somebody need it. Some of them hangups that you frustrated about that you keep coming to the altar about every Sunday and every Wednesday and you keep bringing up in your P12 me, it's in your mind. Yeah. A lot of you can't quit doing stuff because the image. I couldn't because the image. It was fun after kicking and hanging out and bothering. Yeah. It was fun, but God had to shift my image. Yeah. Shift your image. Break the image and then you break the stronghold. Let me give you this right quick. My God, time got me. In order for a negative, my God, a negative situation, my God, a negative, if, if, if you got a ball that's going a negative way, if your life is going in a negative way, the only way your life going to shift, it got to be interrupted. It got to be interrupted with something positive. It got to be interrupted. So when God takes something from you, he try to put something in you. He, when God takes something from you, see, many of you is telling God to deliver me, but you ain't, going, you ain't putting nothing in there. Are you going down there and say, God, I want to be free? And you get charged up, but then you don't go home. You never read your Bible. Yeah. You never pray. When God deliver you from something, he deliver you to something. When God take you out, he's going to bring you, he's going to put himself in. Yeah. 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 You got to fill up on God. Yeah. You can't stay clean and sober trying to fill up on the mess. Yes. You can't conquer unless you conquer through Christ. Yeah. It's not by my might. Nor by my power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Zechariah 4 and 6. Yeah. There are certain things that are going on in your life right now that the flesh has got you involved in and entangled in that it's going to take God to get you out of. Yeah. And the quicker you go to God, the quicker you'll get free. Yeah. Many of you are wounded, but you won't come to God. Yeah. You'll come to church, but you won't meet the God who died for the church. Yeah. I don't want you to come to church. I need you to come to Christ. If you come to Christ, you'll come back to church. When you have had a real encounter with God, can't nothing move come you away on, from God. Come on, come on. Let me finish this because we got to go. My God, my God. Even though demons are indirectly the cause of these things that's going on in our lives and, and, and use them to gain control over our life, in context, strong, in context, the stronghold Paul talks about are, write this down, wrong beliefs. Let's talk about wrong beliefs, and I'm moving. Wrong beliefs. You know, we've been taught a lot of wrong stuff. My spiritual father, Bishop, used to say one of the hardest things that he found out to do as a pastor 
is to get people to unlearn mm. wrong beliefs. That's a hard thing to do when somebody is steeped in religion, steeped in tradition. And my grandma did, and her grandma did, and her grandma did, and her grandma. So you think everybody did? Have you ever thought to see if it was right? Have you ever thought that there's another way to make chili beans other than what your generation did? So we talking about, we talking about, see, Paul is dealing with the church because, because wrong belief has crept into the church. I'll stay with me. I'm going to get us out here. I want to finish there. Wrong belief has crept into the church. So he's talking to the Corinthian church. They still believe in stuff that was false. Many false prophets and false people come in and they, and they attacked. They was like wolves and they attacked the sheep. And they started teaching them all this mess. And they begin to set up strongholds in their minds and in their life. They moved away like some of us and all around the nation. People have drifted away from Genesis through Revelation. And they've been persuaded. They've been hoodwinked. My God, they've been provoked, my God, to move away from, the, from what God talked about. My God, Paul said you was running a good race. Galatians 5 and 1, you was running a good race. My God, what happened? You then went back up under these laws and rules and regulations. You was free from all that stuff. Now you're trying to go back to the very thing that you God set you free from. How is it that God can set you free from this stuff, but you go back to it? Yeah. Don't you know we look like a fool, man of God, to go back to smoking dope? Is you crazy at 49 and 50 Come years on, old? Man. We running around there. How can you go back Jesus. to the very thing, my God, that drove you to God? How can you go back to the very thing that drove you to God? It's like the Bible says, you're like a dog returning to his vomit. When a dog throw up, it goes away to come back and lick up his vomit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you will go back if you don't have laser focus. Yeah. Then you start telling yourself, it's okay. I've been away for a while, so I can handle it. I'm strong enough. That's just what the enemy wants you to think. I've been away from him for 30 days. I'm good now. I can, go, I can at least let him come over. We ain't going to do nothing. I'm strong now. I've been walking with Pastor Peoples that go home for Christ Church, Miss Allen. I'm good. I can let her come over now. I ain't gonna do nothing. I'm gonna sit on I'm gonna let her sit on the couch and I'm gonna sit on the dining room table. I ain't gonna do nothing. But it's it's 9:30 at night. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Look how the flesh just led you. You didn't compromise. That's what happens. Soon we get a little victory, my God, we forget. The blessing is in. The blessing is in. You better remember what God brought you out of. You better remember the pain that was attached to it. You cried out to God, my God, he finally did it. You better, the Bible says guard. You better guard. You better guard your freedom. You better guard your deliverance. You better guard your healing. For you know it, your brother be right back wrapped up again. It's so easy, my God. It's, it's easy to get free. It's, a hard, it's hard to maintain your freedom. It's easy to get free because Christ already gave the day, told us we're free on Calvary. But you got to maintain your freedom. It's harder to maintain it. It's easy to get free, Michelle, but can you, can you stay free? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Freedom has come down to a choice. I got to make a choice. I'm free. And now I got to walk it out. Yeah. But once God get me free, now I got to make a choice and laser focus to stay free. Yeah. Yes, and most people in the body of Christ can't stay free. Mm. Let's look at this. I'm moving. Well, first of all, wrong beliefs leads to acts of disobedience. You find that in verse 5 in the scripture. When your belief is wrong, your behavior is wrong. When your belief is wrong, we justify sinful behavior. When your belief and you don't have a revelation of the scripture, you tell God, God going to forgive me. God know my heart. God going to forgive you, and God do know your heart. And the heart is sinful, and the heart is wicked. But the heart ain't talking about this, this organ. So when you say God know my heart, you're talking about your mind. And the Bible says it's with the mind that we serve God. And so the book of Ephesians, I think it's 1 and 7, so often talk about, my God, we are separated. My God, I know Ephesians 5, 4 and 5 talk about that, but a lot of us is cut off from God because of sin. A lot of our sins is embedded in our, in our thinking. So when you're talking about God know your heart, <laughs> think about what, what, you, what we're saying. Well, God know your mind. The mind don't want to submit to God. The mind don't want to obey God. What do Ephesians 1 and 7 say? Let me hurry up and get y'all out of here. Lord, have mercy. It may be Ephesians 1 and 7. You know, I draw a blank too, I get. He said, he is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood he's, he, blood of his son and, and forgave our sins. He showered his kindness along, uh, on us along with, 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 with wisdom and understanding. My God, is it two and one? 
Okay, here we go. Once you, here you go. It's two and one. I'm sorry. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin, but just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world, he is the spirit that works in the hearts, hearts, minds of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclination of the sinful nature. It's two and one. God know my heart. Look what the scripture just said. Our mind leads us to follow the sinful nature mm -hmm. and the passions of the flesh. <laughs> Quit telling God, God know your heart. Boy, that cut them people. I know it. Yeah. Cut us all. And so we can write this down, religious lies. I'm coming. Religious lies. We got to guard against the religious lies and deceptions the enemy used to enslave, uh, to entangle or control us. He controls our way of thinking. Again, our attitudes and our actions. Religious lies. We all go up somewhat, my God, in churches, my God, and they taught us stuff, but they didn't teach us Bible. Amen. They taught us tradition. Yeah. They taught us man-made rules. And that's what Paul is talking about when he's dealing with the church, especially over there in Galatians and all that type of stuff. Also in Corinthians, my God, in Colossians. He talked about it all heavy in the book of Colossians, my God. Rules. Rules, rules, rules. Everything is about rules, my God. A lot of y'all go up. If you if you wear jeans, my God, you're going to hell. If you yeah. women women can't preach, you know what I'm saying? It's people, my God, I've been told this. It's people have left my church because y'all have preached the gospel, and I, you know that they have not come back because y'all, Matt, and all y'all women has preached the gospel. Wow. See, it's a whole lot that I have to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. Left the church because of lies. And when you think about it, when Jesus was crucified on his way to the cross, Mary then was there. Oh, my God, when he rose, first one at the tomb was women. Women always held the church down. Women, my God, I think, boy, I give God, boy, we, I give, thank men that stand up and honor our women inside of going over Christ's church. Because we got some real women in this church. Yes, Lord. Women has always held it down. Women has always held the church down. Yeah, we respect and honor women. My God, I got some anointed women that I preach me in this church. But people have left going off of Christ's church because they feel like women shouldn't be preaching. They take the scripture where Paul talks about how he suffered women to be quiet in the church. Women sat on one side of the church and the men sat on the other side of the church. And so if a wife, if Teresa was going to holler at her husband, she would have had to holler all over the church, my God, which was, di was disrupt the service. Paul was bringing order to the church. You got something you want to talk about? Go home and talk about it. That's context and Bible. Ain't got nothing to do with woman not being able to handle the gospel. I'm sorry. Let me get out. Let's get on to number three, false arguments. So you got wrong beliefs, religious lies, and false arguments and pretensions that come against the true understanding and knowledge of God. Oh, the world is putting pressure on the Bible. The world is telling you, my God, oh, my God, wrong is right and right is wrong. The world is telling you, my God, that we don't have to abide by the decrees and the laws, my God, of the Bible. They outdated. They man-made this and man. See, we, we having a lot of pressure getting put on. That's why I say it's going to take laser focus, ladies and gentlemen. You better know in whom you believe and what you believe. Because you're going to be picked off or you know it. You're going to be compromising. My God, I'm telling y'all, this still works. I tried a whole lot of stuff 20 plus years ago to get it right. But when I picked up this right here, oh, my God, it's good on this side. Oh, I promise you, this still works, my God. The word of God is still powerful. Everything you're going through, this has the power to deliver you. I told y'all Sunday, this teach you how to be a mama. It teach you how to be a father. It teach you how to be a grandparent. It teach you how to invest your money. It show you what not to invest in. It tells you how to build your life on a firm foundation, my God. It helps you overcome strongholds. It helps you overcome false images. It'll put your marriage back together. It'll restore your relationship with your kids. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God, I promise you, my God, the word of God, if you submit to the word of God and quit picking and choosing, my God, it's also able to restore you. Oh my God, come on somebody. I don't care how broken you are. God will heal you if you let him heal you. I don't care what you've been through. God will fix you if you let him fix you. Come on somebody. But you got to submit to it. You got to get off in it. You got to flip the pages, baby. Quit letting the world tell you what's right and what's wrong. How you going to let the world and people around you tell you what's right and wrong? Some of us, your people, friends that don't even, don't even come to church because you let people tell you, I ain't got to go to church to be a Christian. A person that say they're Christian but never want to have communion, I mean community, fellowship, I question some things. If you say you're a Christian and you don't never want to be in the house of the Lord, I wonder are you really saved? People just too messy in church. Well, when you showed up, there go another one that was messy. Now, real talk. 
real talk. See, see, these are, I'm trying to finish, church. I'm about to finish. These, see, these are the false arguments. These are the false things. These are the strongholds. These are the beliefs because, see, we let people tell us, I can stay at home and watch church. Yeah, there's some substance to that, but it ain't Bible. Right down Hebrews 10.25. Yeah. Not to forsake the assembly or gather yourself together. Paul tells you, my God, you need, my children, you need strength. You need strength. I, Juanita the Biden said it best. He said, I need you to survive. Don't you know you come off and it broke down, my God, and somebody got a word for you? When you left to yourself, all you got is yourself. So if I'm depressed, oppressed, and suppressed, and all I do is stay at home, my God, all I got is my own negative thoughts. My own negative thoughts. So if I'm left to myself, I'm doomed for destruction. Many of you think, my God, I'm, I'm, de- I just, I'm depressed. I don't want to go to church. I, yeah, 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 yeah. My God, now you just stay at home. For what? And look up at the ceiling, going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody care about me. Nobody love me. My p leader ain't called me. Well, you didn't tell your p leader you weren't coming to church. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. Lies. I don't need nobody. I could do this by myself. I ain't got to pay my tithes. I'm blessed. I got 401k. I got a job making 12 hours an hour. I got a car with some air conditioner. See, this, this is, that's, 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 that's poverty mentality. It's not a king. I'm being serious, church. I'm finna finish. It, it's not kingdom mentality. And so we need to compromise and negotiate, and we believe lies. We believe lies. You know why we believe them? Because they become strongholds. And then we also look at other people. Paul said, don't compare yourself by somebody else. Paul also says everything is permissible, but everything ain't beneficial. Just because Tanya doing no mean you supposed to do it. Yeah. You probably can't handle what Tanya can handle. And you trying to be like Tanya and you got your butt in trouble, now you can't handle something. Uh-huh. Recognizing strongholds. Do you understand? Wrong beliefs leads to strongholds. Religious lies leads to strongholds. False arguments. False armor, pretenses that are against the truth and understanding. Everything that you're reading, even on Google, be careful. Yeah. Bishop told me that years ago. He said, be careful what you're Googling. Mm-hmm. Be careful what you're reading. Yeah. Be careful what you're basing as truth because it's on the Internet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You better have some discernment. Yeah. Yeah. Better have some discernment. I'm always adding Shifting and turn down, replacing. You better know what's God and what ain't God. Yeah. Google it, Google it. Oh, that's the truth? You're running with it. And then like Minister Lenny taught us on, in, in class, he said a lot of us are sharing stuff on Facebook that ain't truth. Mm. Because somebody else sharing it and it sounds good, we go share it. So everybody that's connected to us is thinking that's truth. Mm. So you propagating, propagating whatever truth, false, falsehood. Yeah. Yeah. Be careful what you're sharing. Before you, before you put a scripture on the thing that somebody else shared, make sure if it's Matthew 18, 5, make sure it's at Matthew 18, 5. Yeah. Yeah. Don't just share it. Don't just share it. Now, let me finish. Strongholds can be considered as practice ways of habitual thinking that bind us to habits, addictions, and lifestyles. I'm going to close it right there. Strongholds bind us. Oh, my God, I want to talk about yokes and bondages next week if the Lord delay is coming. My God, but habits, addictions, and lifestyles, strongholds. Binds us. It yokes us together with addictions. And addictions is not just drugs and alcohol. How about being addicted to false beliefs? Religion. How about codependency? How about I got to have a man because I can't be by myself? How about I always got to have somebody stroking me? How about do I, I got to always go to somebody for prayer, but I don't go to God for myself yeah, for prayer. Yeah, yeah. Addictions. Some people's addicted to TV and they can't read. They can't read because they're addicted to TV and TV is interfering with them reading. That's what I mean. Not illiterate. Some of us is too busy. Some of us is addicted to excitement. We're addicted to entertainment. Some of us, my God, we hold back on God because we got to have all the fashion designs and all the clothes, so we rob God, and we think because I'm in church faithfully, but I'm not doing what God told me to do. I'm, yeah. I'm picking and choosing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm trying to say? So therefore, I'm going to give God what I want to give him because I got to have some shoes. I got to have some clothes. I got to have all this, and, and, and at least I am doing something. My God, God, don't you know the Bible says, hey, God, what you brought home, God blew away. Mm-hmm. You can't just give God what you want to give God. Amen. 
Many of us around the country give God what we think he want. That ain't, he gave specific instructions, 10%. Yeah. 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 Some of y'all, my God, believe that it don't work today. Thank God for the testimony, it do work. Yeah. Thank God for the testimony, I know it work. Yeah. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? But we got strongholds. A lot of us are sitting up in here right now with a major habits, major pain. And I didn't even get into the emotional strongholds. Some of us, is more of our addictions is emotional more than it is mental. We're addicted emotionally to a whole lot of stuff. 